Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shar Khan and I'm a student. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Zaknayak because not only the Muslims but everyone here is actually proud of you. So basically my question is, uh, recently in the Indian news channel there was a case like the daughter-in-law was raped by her father-in-law and it was a Muslim. So basically the Malvis gave uh, it like that she has to marry her father-in-law and her husband is no more her husband. Do you have your say on that? The brother again has picked up a very important issue of the media. And people may be aware that a few months back there was a girl by the name of Imrana. She was raped by a father-in-law and the fatwa was given by the majority of the Indian scholars, ulmas. And one Darul Ulum gave the fatwa that because she was raped by the father-in-law, she cannot go back to her husband. She is haram for her husband. Now the moment the media finds something which is interesting and can malign Islam, they pick it up and they blow it out of proportion as though there is nothing else in Islam but this issue. With the Indian press, what they did? Most of the channels carried this news. That the ulmas, the shuyukhs, the maulanas of Islam, they say, a girl, she is raped by the father-in-law, she is a victim. But what does Islam say? Instead of supporting her, now Islam is telling she cannot go back to her husband. She is haram for the husband. And they use this news and they blew it out of proportion even till this day today. Again, I always say that if you don't know how to answer the media, the people should be trained. And later on, after a few weeks, there were some other Muslim scholars said, No, 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 she is not haram for the husband, she can go to her husband. Whoever is giving fatwa that she is haram for the husband is wrong. We are fighting like cats and dogs in front of the non Muslims. We are washing our dirty linen in public. The joke is that both the groups of scholars are quoting the same verse of the Quran to give a fatwa. The group of scholars who say that she is haram for the husband, they are quoting a verse from the Quran from Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 22, which says that you cannot do nikah with the woman who your father has done nikah with. Now in Arabic, nikah has got two meanings. One meaning is marriage. And the other meaning is sexual intercourse. And you ask any Arab who is well versed with Arabic, he'll tell you yes. Nikah has got two meanings. One is marriage, the other is sexual intercourse. Now this first group of scholars, which are in majority, belonging to a group of Darul Ulum, they take the meaning of Nikah as sexual intercourse. So if you take the meaning of Nikah as sexual intercourse, the verse of the Quran says that you cannot have sexual intercourse with your sister. You cannot have sexual intercourse with a paternal auntie, with your maternal auntie, and you cannot have sexual intercourse with that woman who has had sexual intercourse with your father. So based on this, they say that father did sexual intercourse with the woman. Now that woman cannot do sexual intercourse with the son. Therefore, the husband becomes haram. The other group is fighting, no, it is nikah, and we are fighting like cats and dogs. We should use a hikmah in the plan. Point number one. What happened with Imrana was not sexual intercourse, it was Zina bil Jabr, rape. So the difference between rape and sexual intercourse. And rape is not called nikah in Arabic. Point number one. That answers. No, no, no. You are playing with words. It is the same. No problem. See, as I told you, if someone says something wrong, there is a technique of debating. If someone says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, instead of arguing, I will say, okay, take. 200,000 dirhams, take 200,000 dirhams, now give me 500,000 dirhams. He said, no, no, no. Turn the tables over. So when I was asked this question, I told that I agree with you for sake of argument that nikam is sexual intercourse. So the verse of the Quran would read that you cannot have sexual intercourse with your sister, with your paternal auntie, with your maternal auntie, and with the woman who has had sexual intercourse with your father. That means Quran gives permission you can have sexual intercourse with your neighbor woman with the woman on the street. They said, no, no, no. I said, why? 
if you mean nikah means sexual intercourse so quran says don't do sexual intercourse with your sister with your paternal auntie maternal auntie and the woman who your father had intercourse with but you can have sexual intercourse with the neighbor woman with the woman on the street and the answer is no so the right meaning is nikah means marriage which reads you cannot marry your sister you cannot marry your paternal auntie your maternal auntie and you cannot marry the woman that has married your father but surely you can marry the neighboring woman you can marry the woman on the street so with hikma without fighting who is right you give this and no ulama will ever say that you can do sexual intercourse zina with a girl on the street so use your hikma and the problem is solved but unfortunately we are fighting like cats and dogs in front of the media and making a mockery of islam hope that answers the question thank you very much sir